Welcome to IJDM, coming to you from 1998. And yes, yet another video about video on floppy disk. Welcome back to IJDM. Yeah, that was a different intro, wasn't it? Yes, I did shoot that intro on this camera. And I know this camera's been featured, well, at least other models of it on uh, other channels such as 8-Bit Guy or LGR. Uh, they did it well in depth, and I'm not going to get necessarily too much into the photo aspect of it because it's been done to death. This is the FD81 series, which features the uh, option to record movies or do regular pictures, still photos, and then also play them back uh, if you want to see your still photos or if you want to review your movie. And this all works, of course, which is the main star of this one, the floppy disk, which you just put in there and you can put the floppy disk I think while the camera's on I have a few times I didn't notice it doing anything weird and of course there's the little intro I did and I can play that back on the camera which actually looks a lot better than what you probably saw and I'm going to go into that in just a second once this finishes reading which as you can see takes a while because it has to read nearly the entire floppy disk I was recording this on the 320 resolution Okay, deja vu. We already saw that. So we know you can play back the actual video and audio on it, which is pretty cool. Um, I'm not sure if all these cameras, when they started doing video, had audio as well. Maybe they did. Maybe they didn't. I do have an FD88 on the way that supposedly has a little bit better quality, especially with the photos um, that I got. I mean, it was, it was almost the same price as this one. I just happened to get this one first and wanted to just feature this camera and just go through some of the features on it. So we have that intro I shot. So we've already seen that. So we're just going to pop that right out. That tells you no disk. And another one in. Oh, something about that sound. So no file. And then if I want to record stills, I'll switch over to this mode. And just one second. There's your uh, photo mode. And you're not going to see anything because I have the lens cover on it. And it did come with the lens cover. I found... A lot of them in the auctions are actually missing this lens cover. It's just something I wanted, uh, especially for a vintage camera to help protect the lens. And viewfinder is okay. Like I said, it's, it's not a high resolution camera kind of thing, but it's it's enough to you know point and click and see what you're actually doing. You can adjust a manual or automatic focus on the stills. I didn't really go too much into the video thing. I just kind of pointed and clicked, but there's a find mode, record mode, image size. So this goes 1024 by 768, or you can knock it down to, I believe, 640. Yeah, 640. So that's your film mode. And again, that was covered in other videos by LGR and 8-Bit guys. So I'm not going to get too much into that. I will show a few photos with it, of course. But the main thing we want to look at today is the movie function on it. And there is not a whole lot of options. Pretty much image size. The thing about this is you can go 320 by 240. And being it's MPEG video, probably MPEG 1, I'm guessing. 320 by 240 on a 1.44 floppy gets you about 15 seconds, if you're lucky, of video and audio. That's it. And if you want to go further, you can drop it down to the old 160 by 112 and get a minute, a whole minute of video that, frankly, on modern tech and even computers of the era, it looks absolutely terrible, which makes this whole video kind of pointless, but sometimes we do pointless stuff just for fun. So I'm going to take this outside and I'm going to take some film with it and, and, uh, well, film video and film stills with it and see how it actually works and I'll do that and come right back and I there's nothing exciting it's just point and click you just have your your old uh, thing in. in fact here I'll do one right now so I'm just gonna hit and I'm just gonna do a quick kind of and here is a pan of my keyboard and when you move this it looks awful so you're best just keeping it totally still and here is a pan of my keyboard and when you move this it looks awful so you're best just keeping it totally still the other weird thing with recording video on this is you do have to hold down the button otherwise it stops recording so it it isn't a necessarily a point and click but a point hold the click and then let go when you're done thing 
And there we go, it's it's recorded. And of course I can take a look at that by going into the file viewer, which I am totally doing wrong right now. I need to move it over to play mode. And there it is, so I can hit play. And, and here is a pan of my keyboard. And when you move this, it looks awful. So you're best just keeping it totally still. Which, why did I move that and pan it? But just to show what happens when you move the uh, the actual image because it is only I think 16 frames per second so any movement just looks totally just not smooth at all and then if you want to take a still photo you just switch this over and of course the resolution goes way up to 1024 and I think it actually changes the look because that actually looks closer than it did in the video I don't know maybe something with the sensor but we'll just take a quick uh, photo of this and And there you go, and then I didn't really want the flash on because it looked like it washed the photo out when it went. So I believe that is flash off, so we'll do all the flash off. And there's something rewarding when you're taking photos and then you feel it writing to the disc. And I think this is the faster floppy disk than the original versions. It's just something satisfying about hearing it writing when you take the photo. And once you take the photo, you can carry on. You don't have to hold the image while it's writing. It kind of stores it in a buffer and then sends it to floppy disk. So once it's done doing its thing, and then of course you can hit the playback button and there's my photo of that. So I'm going to go outside and just show a few different side-by-side -side comparisons and just do a few shots and just show you what this camera is all about. I'm not actually going to film that. I think it's kind of silly to watch a video of somebody taking video and film on another camera. And I don't really want to make this too long. So we'll jump right into that in a second. So right now I'm just filming the regular old 320 mode and uh, 16 frames per second. And this is just a sample clip of how that looks like outside with a lot of light and I just used up this floppy. And now we are in 160 mode. This gives us a whole minute on floppy disk, but as you can see, and I'll try to hold the camera still for a minute, because when you move it, it really gets sketchy. But uh, as you can see, the quality is absolutely horrendous, but I am going past the 15 second mark as I'm recording this right now. And we'll stop right about now. And now I'm taking the stuff I recorded outside and transferring it to my editing computer, which is taking forever and ever and ever. Oh, come on. Okay, we got everything transferred, and uh, wow, that uh, that kind of sucked. Uh, it took forever. Uh, so I got a few things in here. Uh, that's my intro I recorded, and here's what it looks like Welcome on the computer. RJDM, coming to you from yeah, it's that small. It is that small, and then this and is. My keyboard and when you move this it looks awful so you're best just keeping it totally still so obviously I can store the video on a floppy here's the photo difference you can see it's a lot larger because it's 1024 and you can see all the dust on my computer keyboard with that shot um, there you see a little more dust too I thought I'd just clean that see sometimes Mac does weird stuff and this is the unwatchable and one minute. Now we are in 160 I mean, you, mode. This gives us a whole. You can you can see it, but it is just it's terrible. It's 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 pretty bad. And then there is the photo um, of the same area there. You can see the difference there. And I took one more of some. Uh, I guess those would be parrots when they uh, hanging out on a, a dead tree um, in my neighborhood. And these are some photos I took, one of the backyard and around the house of my birds and a, a few other things. We went on a hike this weekend where I was able to test out more photos on it. And as you can see in the photos, they're very small. It's because most of my videos are in 4K. Um, I only I didn't increase the photo size, but the video size I did increase uh, by 300% because with the video, it was a lot smaller and almost impossible to see on a 4K uh, framing mode. Hmm, 
Well, video on floppy disks. I would think with modern compression and all the stuff going on and things that we have now, I would think there'd be a way to do a newer version of this. I don't think anybody would ever bother unless it was for some type of vintage thing that you could probably store a lot more on the disc and make it a lot more viewable than, than what this puts out. Again, this is probably using a MPEG-1 uh, encoder on it. The 320 mode, you can kind of see the other mode, not so much. So I could see back then if grandma didn't have email, well, you would you put it on floppy and send her a hello message to your grandma or aunt or uncle or grandpa or whatever? Yeah, yeah, you could, but then they may not even have a computer, so they'd have to go over to somebody's house and watch it, but I guess that could be a thing. So I'm not really sure what the aim was back then for this, this whole thing, but I think it was kind of neat that they did offer that option, and obviously there was some better stuff in that era for recording video, but uh, FD81 overall... I mean, if you want to do video on it and start doing things with like that, no, it's it's more uh, it's more of a hey, let's play with some retro tech. And I did go out in the uh, one of the parks in the area and, and took photos with it. I didn't bother using the video mode, and the photos actually look. I mean, they they have this look to them that I, I kind of do like. I mean, would I use this as an everyday camera? No, I, I probably wouldn't. But just having it as part of a vintage collection is very nice and they are very cheap i think i picked this one up for around 15 20 bucks or something like that and i got the other one coming for about the same price so i'll do a little quick follow-up on that but there you go there's a video how you do video on floppy disks via 1998 by using just a you know digital camera kind of neat